I'm thankful that we found him. It's unfortunate that it ended the way it did. Right now on Denver 7 News at 8 o'clock on Local 3, officers described the crime spree that led to a deadly confrontation between a murder suspect and police. Plus, exiting the pandemic when Dr. Fauci says federal COVID restrictions could be rolled back. Also, is getting a later start to school a good idea for your kids' health? The new options Denver Public Schools is considering. This is not about coddling students. This is about responding to the science to set our students up for success. Hey, I like sleeping in. I know my husband <laughs> who takes the kids to school yeah. likes sleeping in. He would be behind this idea. Well, yeah. um, my, my kids are already up at like 6 a.m. So the shorter sure, wait yeah. time between then and school is better. It's better yeah. for you guys. Yeah. Fewer times you have to yell, where are your shoes? <laughs> right, yes. right. Yes. <laughs> We've got a nice start to our day. Beautiful right now. You're going to find lots of sunshine. Things will change up tomorrow. Kids may well, want to rethink what they're wearing to school tomorrow as snow develops, but today beautiful sunny skies. We're at 36 degrees in Denver, starting to see more of a warm up and look at the dog walking forecast. We're going to be here by about nine o'clock in the low to mid 40s. We're going to hit highs right around 55 to near 60 degrees. That pushes us a good 10 to about 15 degrees above normal this afternoon. Denver under again, plenty of sunshine. Now the winds picked up a bit yesterday. I know I was trying to run in it today. You're going to find wind speeds at about 10 to 20 miles per hour a little bit gustier in through the northern front range mountains those winds out of the west though so it's just going to continue to eat away at some of the snow that's still uh, out on some of the side streets and in those shady spots mid 50s mid to upper 50s for highs we've got parker at right around 56 today highlands ranch near 60 even up near fort collins and Greeley, where it's a few degrees cooler typically than what we see here in denver will be in the low 50s now fast forward to well just about 36 hours from now and we're going to start to see snow developing from north to south, leaving us with snow through the evening commute on Friday. We'll take a closer look at the timing of this and I'll show you how much you might be waking up to Saturday morning coming up. And we have a problem, unfortunately, out to the east side of town over in East Denver at Central Park and MLK, where the intersection is partially closed down. Mostly the northbound side of uh, Central Park is closed at MLK and they also say the eastbound side is restricted. Beeler over here to the east and Syracuse over to the west can get you around it going north and southbound. Any of the uh, numbered roads can probably get you around it too. Uh, Denver police are investigating a crash involving a person that was out there and the person was taken to the hospital with some very serious injuries. That's why they have it restricted right now. The rest of the drive is running really heavy on I-70, on I-270, up to the north side of town into downtown Denver. So it's a really busy drive for us in a lot of spots with a lot of volume on the highways as well as on the side roads. You can even see it here on C-470 up towards Morrison. The earlier car fire down to the south side is pretty much cleared up off to the side and a ton of traffic going down to the Denver Tech Center right now. A violent crime spree that stretched nearly a week across two metro cities is finally over today. The suspect died after a police shooting last night. Denver 7's Colette Bordelon joins us from where this all ended in Centennial near South Parker Road and Bronco Parkway. Colette. Yeah, the man Aurora police say was killed is Jose de Jesus Montoya Villa. They think he was trying to escape at the time during that chase. He was wanted for first degree murder. Police believe he's the shooter who killed a woman inside of an Aurora church last week. This all started yesterday afternoon in Aurora just before four, where police say Montoya Villa started shooting in a parking lot, hitting a 26 year old man. That man is hospitalized but expected to survive. Police say Montoya Villa then stole a car, crashed it, robbed a liquor store. We don't know yet if anything was actually taken before stealing another car while pointing a gun at the person who was driving it. Montoya Villa was spotted in that stolen car in Centennial by police who pulled him over. There were more shots fired and the suspect died at the hospital. Officers say they're thankful they found Montoya Villa, but that it's unfortunate it ended this way. I don't think investigators knew on Friday and, and through the coming days that this is how it was going to end. Investigators have been hard at work since Friday night uh, around the clock, not only trying to locate him, uh, but kind of piece together what led up to the shooting. The Aurora police chief says she's relieved none of her officers were hurt during the chase. She also says they stopped a dangerous criminal from further victimizing the community. Now, the officers who opened fire are on leave. That's typical in these kinds of cases. They were wearing body-worn cameras at the time. That footage will be used in the investigation going forward. 
We're live in Centennial this morning. Colette Bordelon, Denver 7. All right, thank you, Colette. Well, a man wanted for killing two people in southeast Douglas County is now in custody. The sheriff's office says Casey Duvall was arrested in Salina, Kansas last night. Sources tell Denver 7 he shot and killed his sister and another person inside a home along Russellville Road near Franktown Tuesday. Investigators have not said anything about a possible motive. Today, friends and family will say their final goodbyes to the five year old little boy killed in an Aurora apartment fire. Funeral services for Abner Salmaron Bautista Jr. will be held today. Officials say he died in a fire that was intentionally set by a neighbor. Last night, the community gathered at La Machaca restaurant on East Colfax for a benefit dinner, and the proceeds will go to Abner's family as they pay for funeral expenses. La Machaca will also hold another benefit tonight from 5 to 8 p.m. There's a cover charge of $20 for adults and $8 for kids. And again, all proceeds will go to the Bautista family. The Table Mesa King Supers in Boulder will be open for its first full day today after being closed since the mass shooting last March. It was an emotional day yesterday as the store officially reopened its doors. Before the reopening, the community gathered to honor the 10 Coloradans killed in the shooting. I'm still crying, very emotional. I got flowers and I put them against the wall there. I said I would be here for this grand opening to let them know that we're 100% behind them. We pick up and we persevere. And later this spring, a tree garden will be planted outside the store. Each tree will represent one of the 10 lives lost in the shooting. We do have some breaking news this morning on the west coast. A fast moving brush fire is prompting evacuations near Laguna Beach, California. You can see the, the heavy smoke out there right now. This is aerial video and you can see um, just how close it is to homes. It's being called the Emerald Fire because it's very near the Emerald Bay neighborhood. And, and you can see the Pacific Coast Highway, the PCH that runs right through there. Uh, strong winds are forcing that fire down a hillside. Very similar to how the Marshall Fire spread here a little more than a month ago, so certainly a scary situation, and we will be keeping our eye on it this morning. Meanwhile, this afternoon, Boulder County will award the contract to clean up debris from the Marshall Fire. It isn't clear what started it yet, but investigators are looking into an abandoned coal mine fire as one possible source. It comes as the federal government is giving Colorado nearly $10 million for abandoned coal mine fires. The Department of the Interior says that money is part of the government's plan to clean up these sites over the next 15 years. Today, Colorado lawmakers will discuss changing who investigates our wildfires. Right now, it's left up to local fire departments and governments, but a proposed bill would require the state to investigate the fire causes. Today, a Senate Committee for Agriculture and Natural Resources will debate the bill. Turning to the latest developments on vaccinating the youngest Americans, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has documents out showing the rollout could begin as soon as February 21st. Food and Drug Administration advisors will meet early next week to discuss the authorization. Meanwhile, a protest over vaccine requirements and COVID restrictions might disrupt Sunday's Super Bowl. Homeland Security issued a warning that a convoy of truckers could impact the game in L.A. The agency has received reports of drivers planning to potentially block roads in major U.S. cities. These types of protests have occurred in Canada recently. The convoys threatened to worsen already bad supply chain issues. Meanwhile, Dr. Anthony Fauci says he hopes all COVID restrictions will be stopped in the coming months. He told the Financial Times, quote, as we get out of the full blown pandemic phase of COVID-19, these decisions will increasingly be made on a local level rather than centrally decided or mandated. More people will make their own decision on how they want to deal with the virus. Denver Public Schools is dropping its mask requirement. The district announced the rule will end at midnight on February 25th, two weeks from now. Denver's mayor calls the move a viable step with COVID cases falling and the city's vaccination rate above 80% for people five and older. Still, the White House is urging students, teachers and parents to follow CDC guidelines. That agency is still recommending universal indoor masking in schools, regardless of vaccination status. Colorado's largest school district is also considering later school start times. Yeah, a lot to think about anytime you start messing with schedules. Denver 7's Veronica Acosta joins us live because Denver Public Schools is weighing several options uh, to improve kids' health overall. 
It is, and come next year, teens will be getting a little bit more sleep. At least that's a hope with DPS's healthy start times. Denver Public Schools actually introduced this concept back last year in 2021. That was following a Board of Education's resolution. So here's the plan. All DPS middle and high school students, they're going to start class no earlier than 8.20 in the morning. And to give you a little bit of perspective, some of those middle and high schools, they start as early as 7.40 in the morning right now. So this would give students at least four more, 40 more minutes of sleep. And of course, it's all in order to support those healthier sleeping habits in teenagers. District officials, they are basing this change on multiple research studies that show those later start times support better academic performance and the overall physical and mental health of teens. Sleep is critical for our students' mental and physical health. And we know that our adolescent students are not getting enough sleep. We have the power with our start times to, to help students catch up on that sleep deficit. All right, so the big question this morning, when can you start setting your teen's alarm clock back just a little bit? You're gonna have to wait a little longer for that. The district's plan is to enact this change in the fall of 2023. In studio, I'm Veronica Acosta, number seven. Hey, a little more sleep, I'll never complain about that. <laughs> All right. All right, thank you, Veronica. Uh, double, double traffic for the sake of animal style fries, the new in and out location opening across the Metro today.